There we go. We're back. Mm. All right, everybody. Uh, sorry for the uh, lengthy delay there. That was uh, some technical issues on uh, on my end. So hopefully you guys will see that we're that we're somehow live. I know we're 20 minutes late, but uh, thanks to uh, to Robert for for jumping in tonight. Um, uh, Matt, thanks for joining as well. Let me get this okay. on to a good. Uh, there we go. Yeah, All right. So. Anyway, I wanted to jump right in. So a little bit of uh, some technical snafus, but I wanted to talk a little bit about some Texas whiskeys. I know that this has become, over the course of the last year, year and a half, a really kind of just big what to do. And I've kind of got into it myself, really enjoyed the flavor profile. So the two guys I've got in here tonight, uh, Matt from Whiskey Crusaders, Robert Licorice, uh, head distiller uh, over at Iron Root Distillery. For anybody who some reason or for some reason does not know who you guys are, do you want to just uh, tell everybody a little bit about uh, who you are, your channel, and uh, and Iron Root? Sure. Well, Rob, you can go first. Okay. All right. Um, so Iron Root's a small distillery in Denison, Texas, so basically around the Texas-Oklahoma border. Um, we kind of specialize in the use of, like, crazy heirloom corns and – using French distilling techniques for making American whiskeys like bourbon. And uh, there's some malts and other stuff coming down the pipeline as well as some brandies. But uh, my brother and I uh, were schooled in the French methodology, specifically from the cognac region. And I don't know, it's been really fun to kind of apply those and work those in Texas. Yeah, I'm Matt with from the Whiskey Crusaders. I also have a YouTube channel and run a whiskey club. I hang out, we have cool guests like Robert come on, come over, hang out the house. It's always there's always something crazy going on in our channel. Pretty much somebody usually cools here. So no, yeah, you guys, you guys have all got good stuff going on, and uh, and Robert, uh, kudos to you guys. You guys are knocking it out of the park with the whiskey. So thank you. All right. So why don't we get into this? So my the first whiskey I've got is just the the XC, which is the straight bourbon whiskey. So I poured this a little while ago, and I guess why don't we go through it? And if uh, Robert, if you don't mind, do you want to just maybe describe a little bit about it, its profile, things along those lines? Sure. Um, so we have two different Harbinger whiskeys. We have XC, which we're pouring right now. That's our 90 proof. And then we also have Harbinger 115, which is obviously the higher proof version that's out there on the market. Um, they're both uh, straight whiskeys. Uh, they're going to be from the kind of same flavor profile from what we do. So for us, they're going to use uh, a large amount of purple corn and bloody butcher corn small amounts of a flint corn, a rye, and yellow corn. Um, now they, with Promethean, our other kind of profile for bourbon is kind of the inverse of this one, but this one's be sweet, fruity. Um, I think I think my favorite descriptor uh, was uh, Jason from the Mash and Drum when he was tasting i which is even the big brother to Harbinger, um, was saying, what is the juicy fruit? <laughs> I think was the term he used to describe it. And I think that's going to be a lot of what these corns bring. Some of these red corns and purple corns are really, really fruity. Um, and that's what I love about this guy. So the 90 proof is going to be the softest, kind of the sweetest, really the entry proof for us. Um, we wanted something that was really, really approachable. So we really try to dial up the sweetness and just try to make it light, easy drinker. Yeah, and it's it's all of that. Like, it's got a great nose. I mean, as as you well know, Matt knows, and anybody with any bit of experience with the Texas whiskeys is that it's just got that that very unique the terroir of the of the the whiskey that it is. I mean, it just has its own profile, which I really have come to like. I mean, I like something that's bold and has a little bit of that that nice oakiness to it, with still some of the sweetness. And I think those heirloom um, corns that you guys are doing a lot of work with really kind of translates into this whiskey. When I first tried it, I mean, it was just way more bold and flavorful than I would say most, let's say, entry level type 90 proof whiskeys. It's just way more bold, that nice spice and everything that's there. Oh, yeah. I mean, the Texas weather is punishing and it it throws the whiskey around quite a bit. And so... I would say that that is a, a commonality amongst a lot of Texas whiskeys. Not everyone, but a lot of them, they tend to be very big, bold. You get a lot of wood tannin, especially yeah. when you're seeing well, most of the whiskey releases are in that two to kind of four or five year old range. Um, so the young, really, really sp spunky, I guess is the, the best word, 
really uh, bold whiskey, especially since most of them, again, are going to be coming pot still. So the grain is going to be way more expressive than what you would see coming out of a column still typically. Now, is everything that you're basically doing there um, all pot still for the most part? Uh, all of our whiskeys are going to be pot still. We have a traditional Scottish style pot still. Um, it's got a very sharp downward angle uh, off the top for us. So we get a lot of the oils and tends to be much heavier spirit. Um, that's what, because everything we do, my brother and I really like to focus on um, mouthfeel is one of the big things for us. So um, especially when you start seeing that 100 proof and up, it tends to be much oilier whiskey, a little bit heavier, kind of going to coat the palate quite a bit more. And that's something for anything above 100 proof that we really, really try to focus on for the whiskey. Yeah, and it's and it's very good. I mean, it's it's one of those whiskeys. I think you know, even generally speaking, from a ninety proof standpoint, it's just nice and bold. So I mean, if you're not looking for something that's necessarily you know super high proof, this is still going to give you that that punch of the the oak and the the just that that boldness, which is something I I really really appreciate. So um, now moving on to the one hundred and fifteen proof, this one. Um, and, and I guess, Matt, you can chime in too. I guess before we maybe, you know, do you want to just go right into the Harbinger, the 115, and, and we can oh, talk hey. about that one? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. We love yeah. all of Robert's uh, whiskey, so it doesn't matter to me which one we drink because they're all great. Yeah, let's, let's, yeah let's, jump, let's, jump into the, let's jump into the 115. We can talk a little, bit, a little bit about this one. And I guess, Robert, if you don't mind, you want to just kind of do a little descriptor of, of this one as well and uh, let people know about this one. Yeah, sure. Uh, I think you have the 2018. I do. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So, um, so again, as we were talking earlier, Harbinger 115 is going to be a much uh, bolder experience than the XC, the 90 proof. Um, Harbinger 115, we're going to use more European oak in the blend. So we're moving from more of a 10% part of the blend for XC to using it for almost 30 to 40%, depending on the release for the Harbinger 115. So you're going to amp up those baking spices quite a bit, a lot more cinnamon, clove. Um, I think that's one of the things that we really love is the use of the Slovenian oak. Um, and so uh, in our, if you come into our warehouse, about, again, 30 to 40% of our barrels are going to be that European oak. Um, we use it a lot here in Harbinger, and then also in the Hubris uh, whiskey is going to come directly from that European oak. We use a little bit of French oak as well, um, but not generally for the Harbinger 115. So this okay. one's going to be just the American and the and the Euro oak. Um, now every every release we do, um, they've been slowly moving up in age. Uh, we're just getting ready to release the, uh, the first release for 2020, and I think it's 33 months on the youngest. And the okay. oldest whiskey in there is just about. I think it's almost four years old on the okay. side. Okay. And are you um, or the one that you have? I think was twenty seven months on the young. Yeah, yeah. This, yeah, I think this was the twenty. Yeah, twenty seven. Um, I think the Linux cat uh, cat was asking, uh, does the oak give Harbinger a different nose? Um, yeah, it's gonna. To me, again, it, the Euro oak has just a ton of clove, a little bit of cinnamon, and some of those notes. It's really gonna give to it. So to me. It, it just amps up like you're hanging out in a bakery a little bit more from on that side. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. Like a cinnamon roll bakery, I guess. That's, that's a lot what this is. Like I started getting like, as this one opened up for me a little bit, it really started to get a lot of that, like the vanilla sweetness and everything that was there. So that was one thing for me that I was, I was surprised I was pulling as much of the vanilla out, but a lot of those baking spice and um, the nice oak flavor that's there. I mean, for me, the 115, I mean, this probably fits in terms of the profile and the nice dark fruit. I was getting that like dry, dark fruit type of note, which was really good. So it's a great, it's a great combo of all that sweet and spicy and just a very nice layered, layered bourbon. Yeah. I mean, and it's really fun because it is such a high percentage corn trying to find the balance. And for us, I think that Euro Oak really tends to balance out the sweetness of the corn quite a bit. Um, and so that allows us again to play a little bit deeper into some of these heirloom corns and using some of those oaks to kind of balance out the back half of it. No, so it's no. not just a sweet bomb. For you with that, so what is the the difference in the barrels that you're using versus like conventional? For um, you, so, what's it really doing for, for you guys? 
Uh, so we, we use a quite a bit of, I mean, there's a quite a bit different about the barrel cast that we use. We use, first of all, a variety of different barrels uh, from char levels. Most of our barrels are going to be um, char level one and heavy toast. Uh, because the Texas weather is so aggressive, we found that we prefer a little bit lower char because it's not filtering the whiskey quite as much. And you want to wait, but we still need that heavy toast to kind of caramelize all those sugars below that low level of char. Um, beyond that, uh, we typically, especially stuff that's starting to come out right now, you're starting to see some more of our 63 gallon barrels rather than just the 53 gallons. We actually use a larger barrels than what's typically used in Kentucky and other places. Um, one, again, it's going to help us kind of mitigate, deal with the Texas temperatures a little bit. It's going to lower that angel share, um, yeah. soften the aging a little bit on it, allowing us to get some of those age statements. So, I mean, we are starting to get the whiskey now. We have some barrels that are over five years old rolling in the warehouse. And again, I don't see any reason why we can't go longer. So I think it's been a little bit of a misnomer that you can't age whiskey in Texas longer than two or three years. Um, it definitely can be. I mean, we're only five years old. So where the exact upper limit is, I, I can't really tell you right now. But yeah. I definitely can tell you 100% that it is possible. And you just have to kind of use um the environment to your advantage and also kind yeah. of use the barrels to your advantage so yeah i mean robert's barrel house is an adult playground it's amazing in there there's so many different kinds of barrels he has that are fun to try so yeah don't, don't let them kid you there's, there's it's, it's magical in there <laughs> yeah I, I can imagine i mean and that's and that's the interesting part when you look at when you look at the color of this for it to only be a char level number one and still, you know, toasted and all that, mm -hmm. you you can see where you guys really have to kind of, I suppose, pump the brakes at times just to just to try to, you know, stop maybe some of the aging a little bit. But um, man, it's just it's such a great bourbon. Like <laughs> I mean, the profile that it has is just, I mean, absolutely fantastic. Sweet spice. Um, you know, so I mean, for anybody who I would say is is interested in the Texas whiskeys, I mean, definitely give these a try. I mean, if if you think the 115 is going to be a little bit too hot, which it really doesn't drink like 115, I would say, you know. Now, again, the 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 pot still, especially with that downward angle with all the kind of that heavier oil distillate, it is going to be a little bit softer for the proof, typically, just because it, the because it's such an oily whiskey that it's not going to have quite the alcohol burn that you would from something that doesn't quite have that heavier oil content. Yeah. This one, I mean, they, I mean, just comparing the, the 90 versus the, the 115, they're very, very similar. I mean, the 115 is just a little bolder, um, more spicy, which you would expect there yeah. to be, but, um, absolutely an absolutely fantastic, um, you know, bourbon. So, now, Matt, you've got you've got several Thank different you. there. Do you have any? Oh, yeah, I've got a course of two. Scott, right I, I've got to run. Uh, Thank you so much for having me again. I wish you could sit and talk a little bit more about. Yeah, that would be great. Uh, sorry for the game for, for, for us. Um, you got some fun stuff lined up. It looks like. Yeah, I, 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 appreciate, I appreciate your time. Hopefully, we'll be able to do it again and not waste twenty minutes of uh, your time. So. Yeah, no wor no worries. Yeah, I can't wait. Uh, just let me know next time you want to. Uh, or if you want to taste some brandies or do something something crazy, let me know. That sounds good. Hey, I appreciate your time. Uh, thank you. See you. All right. Robert. All so. right. So, so yeah, unfortunately, we weren't able to uh, to listen to Robert long enough uh, to have him uh, kind of go over a few more things just from some technical difficulties. But our uh, our other Texas expert we've got now slid into the other slot so he can uh he can tell you a little bit about some yeah i can tell you a lot and also josh and gretchen work for iron root too they're both in the chat so they can answer all sorts of specific stuff but yeah i know robert's got a whiskey event he's got to run to so okay good fun times but yeah these two i guess you know these are basic ones you can find outside of texas at total wine or uh I, i'm not sure if there's other stores out of texas but i know total wine carries it in several states um, and it, it's, I mean, it's, I mean, they're absolutely fantastic. And I, and I think, you know, the reason I kind of wanted to do this was just to, I mean, to help shed a little bit more light on just what it is that you're, what you're getting. I just don't think a lot of people truly understand like what the Texas weather and just what, 
the distilleries are doing down there are kind of just doing to the bourbon world. I mean, it's they're really doing a, an absolutely you know fantastic job. So. Oh yeah, because like uh, a couple of days ago it was I guess seventy degrees, and now it's uh, going to be thirty in the morning or or less. Yeah, so it, it's crazy. Yeah, so, yeah, that's one of the major factors we have is where we can have multiple seasons in one day here. It's 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 insane, and so what happens to the whiskey is crazy. But and the other thing too, with Texas being so big, there's so many different regions and different climate we have in Texas on its own. At least five to six different climates here in Texas alone to get different flavors on your whiskey. Yeah, and just, like in the grain varietals alone, like you know, I blame Robert for my sick obsession with grain varietals now. Um, and you go to the distillery and ask them what what's all what kind of corn are you using? They're like, well, this kind. I'm like, well, they're like corn. What what is it? Like other kind of corn? Yeah, you know, like. They really don't get the why the hell you want to know why kind of rye and corn and barley they're using. Yeah, like, that's that's the you know that's kind of the the interesting part. You know, like Robert was saying, how they kind of experiment or just use different barrels, mm -hmm. you know, and maybe part of that comes from their their cognac background. But I think a lot of like how they're gonna really they in general bourbon, um, you know, distilleries or whatever. I think the experimentation of different barrels and what it does to a bourbon, I think is going to become maybe a little bit more, I'll say like not, not trendy, but that's where I think they're going to be able to start to monkey around with the different flavors of, of bourbons is maybe experimenting with different, you know, type of Oak and things along those lines. Oh yeah, for sure. Cause like when you walk into their barrel house, Obviously, he's got all the regular racks, but then now he's got all these specialty um, types, different types of wine casks, got Armagnacs, he's got brandy, he's got scotch barrels, all different kinds of scotch. It, it's, it's well, like I said, it's awesome in there. It smells yeah. amazing. So you well, get all these different, he's trying all sorts of different, you know, corns. And, you know, if you ever get a chance to go down there, it's totally worth it. But yeah, he's got, you know, the magic mana and the bloody butcher and the Oaxacan green and purple corn. It, it's, it's wild in there. Yeah. So, I mean, I think, I think them being able to experiment with the different varieties of corn and the different, um, you know, barrels, I think that just makes for a very, you know, interesting and unique, um, you know, bourbon, just from the standpoint of it's going to be different. I mean, already the flavor profile is different, but okay. now start you know implementing those different techniques and stuff it really really is is a an interesting thing and something i'm i'm kind of really buying into I, I really enjoy it so yeah it's it's a vast difference and uh between texas whiskey as texas uh, bourbon in particular of course compared to kentucky bourbon is totally different there's yeah. there's nothing alike in it whatsoever besides the fact that it fits the standard definition of a bourbon yeah. All right. Well, do you want to, uh, should we move on to a couple of the other ones that we, uh, sure. talked a little bit about? Um, so what we're going to go to the balcones next. All right. Let me move all these iron roots out of the way here real quick. Right. So, yeah. the, uh, so the balcones, the, the, um, the samples that were sent to me, um, were from, <laughs> from John captain, make it happen. Who's in the chat right now. So I got to thank him for, uh, for getting these to me. Now these were actually, this is the only experience I've had with, um, I don't know, is the pronunciation Balcones or Balcones or? Balcones. Balcones? Yes. Okay. Yeah, um, it's, it's the fault line here in Texas, what it's named for. Oh, is that what that is? Yeah. Okay. All right. So uh, which one would you, which one would you prefer to prefer with? The one I've got is the, uh, the single malt or the, the bourbon. Probably oh. the bourbon, since we just did bourbon, would make the most sense. Okay, yeah. You know, it comes in, of course, this one's 46%, and this is this is what it looks like. It's this red label. This has got distribution, um, as far as I know, around the country now. Okay. And the great part is it's, it's the starter bourbon, and it's only 30 bucks, whereas they're used to be distiller only, but now it's a, you can get it occasionally around Texas, is their blue corn okay. cast strength bourbon, which is this one. Okay. Well, yeah, so it's, you know, so I think this is probably the good one to start with for sure. But they needed something on the market that didn't cost $80. Yeah, I mean, and this this right here, I mean, this is very, um, you know, I mean, I, I would say, even though I think this is the pot still, right? Yeah, this yeah. is, the, yeah, okay. It's got that, that interesting kind of funky pot still type of nose and everything that you kind of get from it. 
Yeah, you don't vanilla, little little grainy, little grainy. You don't see a lot of column stills here in Texas, to be honest with you. As far as making whiskey goes, it's almost everybody uses pot stills. Okay. And is a lot of that just because of the heat and how and what they're trying to do with the whiskey? I think it's just that you're just experimenting here and it seems to have literally worked really well. And so I think everybody just kind of says, hey, let's if pot still's working, let's use pot still. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's just a Texas tradition now to use pot still. I don't, can't even think of a Texas distiller that uses a column still for whiskey that I know of. Really? I'm sure there probably is one, but not one that I've that I love. Everyone I've ever visited. A lot of use hybrid stills, though. That you'll see plenty of hybrids. Okay, and I, I can I can see that. You know, that's start you start to see a lot of these hybrids in, let's say, quote unquote, craft distilleries, just because it allows them to, you know, switch gears on on different right. spirits and things. So they're trying to to probably double up a little bit in terms of what they're making. But um, yeah, I I can see I can definitely see that. So. No, it's, it's, yeah, it's really nice. But yeah, certain, some distillers, all these, like I know Ocean Iron Rate just uses um, pot stills and this uses pot stills. But yeah, the hybrids are coming pretty uh, frequent. I've noticed that as well. Or a lot of them will make their vodkas on a column, oh, kids, on the column still. But then um, they'll leave some of the grain more or less in there. And yeah. so you actually have flavor in your vodka rather than a neutral grain spirit. So they make a lot of the vodkas in texas to be for whiskey drinkers especially ones like banner and lone elm in particular and they're really good yeah and this so, one um, and this one i get like I, I definitely with with pot still whiskey i always get a, a graininess to it there's always still that like earthy grainy type of of mm -hmm. note that i get which which for me becomes that like what i always described as that like pot still funk there's just that it almost is like smelling like an old dusty whiskey kind of. Yeah, and I think that's kind of what they're going for. Yeah. Especially this is only 24 months old. Is that what this is? That's all it is. Yeah. It's I mean it's a it's a great it's a great noise. I mean fair, fairly oily on the glass and stuff, so Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah, cuz this is my second bottle of this one. The first one I had when it first came out, I didn't think it was as good, but this one on the fridge, I just fresh opened this tonight cuz I finished the other one the other day. But this is quite nice. Wow, that is. Uh, yeah, Balconis puts out a lot of young. Like their youngest product is the six month uh, true. Their uh, baby blue. It's still yeah. good. I really like, enjoyed it. Six months. This is really. I mean, this is really, really good. It's got this like very um, like effervescence almost to it. It's got this tingly like feel, like right on right on the mid palate for whatever reason. Yeah, it does have that exactly, and it's just nice. I mean, these these are the, I would say they're probably the kings of Texas. To be honest, I mean, they put out. Oh my gosh, I must have at least twenty different types of balconas at least. Okay, I mean, you, yeah, they they're always something new, always experimenting, all sorts of cool things. Yeah, that's a great, uh, that's a great um, bourbon right there. It is, and it's and it's a good intro to Texas whiskey because I mean, now granted, uh, Balcona's, and you'll find this with a lot of Texas whiskeys. Each of them has that Texas taste to it, but it also has the uh, the fingerprint of the distillery. Every Balcona's you can tell is a Balcona's product because it all has that same fingerprint on it. Okay, you can find the same thing with Iron Roots products. Same thing has has a fingerprint. Yeah, it's just I the way they run their stills. Yeah, and I suppose a lot of the a lot of them down there are probably going to have their own their own unique profile. And I suppose that's one thing with Texas being so big, you know, that they can come from all the different you know regions within Texas and be night and day from each other. So. Oh yeah, like like this stuff, you know, comparably is like they're about three hours apart between Waco and uh, Denison, where our route is. And this is a pretty, you know, pretty big climate change between North Texas and Central Texas. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you'll get a difference in the flavor for sure between these two, and they just they just run a little bit different. So, and plus, yeah. the grain varietal is different in them too. Whereas you, you know, this using blue corn in this one. So where where are these guys located in in reference to where Iron Root is? Uh about three hours southwest. Okay, all right. So they're getting fairly far, far south then. Yes, like because if guys like from from where we're at in Dallas Fort Worth, Iron Roots about an hour and a half uh, northeast from me. And then if you go directly south, go down thirty five, then you can run into Waco, where they're at, which is an hour and a half south of me. Huh. 
So yeah, we're kind of like dead in the middle between these two. Okay. And then the distillers that are here local to us have a different terroir as well. So yeah. It, and, it, and that's and that's I mean that's really fun with with whiskey because when you're when you're really like searching for different things to be within the same like region, there's probably a lot of states, or I shouldn't say a lot, but a few states who may have a few producers within it. I don't think you're going to get nearly the differences that you're going to get from Texas whiskey just because of how massive the state is itself, you know, and the, right. different, I mean, the different climates. Exactly. Like the Texas whiskey trail is 1500 yeah. miles. <laughs> so it, it's not like a little trail you can do in a day. Yeah. It takes several. Yeah. Let alone tasting a bunch of whiskey and driving somewhere else. Yeah. You need a week or 10 days just to get through the state of Texas. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. This is, this is really, this is really, really nice. I was, um, I, I'm surprised I hadn't tried it at all. And I was kind of holding out for, for this and, um, it's a really nice, sweet, and I would say very approachable bourbon for a lot of people, just even excluding the fact that it's from Texas. Um, just from an introductory standpoint, I think this would be a very, a very nice, like bourbon to start with in general. Yeah, unless it's only 92 proof, it's yeah. not trying to kill you, like yeah. most Texas whiskeys do, which we really like the ones that try to kill you. That's my preference. But uh, you know, and, and I think, I think for a lot of them, like the Iron Root, like going back to the 90 and 115, they drank very similar in terms of the, mm -hmm. the, you know, the heat and just how you know, and when you're starting to add that much more proof to it that's it's that much more dangerous you know so yeah exactly and that is the problem is they are high proof and they don't taste like they're high proof mm -hmm. you'll find out quickly that it's high proof though <laughs> later yeah. in the evening yeah very yeah i really like that all right so here's the one i'm i'm interested to try so yeah I, i'm really uh, interested to see what you think of this yeah so this is this is interesting i'm glad i'm glad john sent this one to me so this is going to be this is the balcones uh single malt and this is um, looks like a total wine store pick. So this is fifty. Oh, is a store pick? Okay. Well, yeah, this is a store pick. It looks like eighty-six proof on this. So here's the regular one. Okay. And this, so this is a regular uh, single malt, which is their bread and butter. It comes at fifty-three percent. Yep. Um, this one is fourteen months old. This particular one, but you now you can now get older ones, significantly older. Trying to see, I brought a bunch of my other. Um, finishes they do on it out as well just because they're fun but yeah so this obviously it's a single malt and it's all barley so this should be interesting to see what you think yeah this. this will be this will be interesting i've i can tell you right now i mean i've i've had, i've got very limited experience you know a with um with many uh, single malts period but to introduce the fact that it's now a texas single malt is going to really be interesting so Okay. Yeah. Right. Sure. Oh, it's it's much sweeter. I would say it's for me. It's not as um, and maybe maybe this is where some of the heat and the oak that's kind of kicking in um, tames the barley a little bit for me because sometimes the barley for me it's such a dominant grain and and I think that's where I struggle with scotch a little bit um, and I'm just generalizing as well right because I've got a a very, I guess, limited, you know, palette for scotch, but this you don't, way, you don't this get the malt way, note that you pick up in a lot of scotches. Yeah. I mean, it's that, I mean, there's still that floral note, but with this, there's still that, like the vanilla, the caramel, it's, it's very, it's much more bourbon like than it is like a, a single malt. Like right. Scotch, and you know? one of the main reasons for that is the fact that they use new oak rather than used oak like a scotch does okay so that's another reason so the cut i mean like I said, this is 14 months old and the color on that is pretty good for 14 months but if yeah. you go to one of their other ones like this is the french oak cask i mean it gets significantly darker yeah, look at that i mean that's like it's you like see through the stupid thing no that's and how old is that this one's 36 months wow so there's almost nothing in the bourbon world that would look that color unless it was upwards of 20 years and maybe still not even that dark. That might be one of the darkest whiskeys I've ever seen. Yeah, exactly. And then this one, let's see here. This one's 25 months. And this is a store pick that is um, a cast strength at 63.3%. So they like to, like a lot of their picks, a lot of their uh, distillery only is all cast strength. 
So it's all high proof. Yeah. Boy, but when I send you some Texas stuff, I'll get some of these cash strength ones to you. And it's kind of strange. I get this. I and and I don't know if you get this or not from this one. And maybe I I don't know, but I almost get like a chocolate brownie kind of nose for some reason. There's something very chocolatey about this. Now that's a store pick, so yeah. there certainly could be. I can't, you know, I don't think I've had that particular store pick, but yeah, there is chocolate nose generally in the single malt, so that would make sense. Okay, but I can't comment exactly on them because I haven't tried that particular. Yeah. one. it's very. I mean, this is for me. Like, if if I was going to drink a, a single malt, I mean, for me, this is already very much of a bourbon profile. Something mm -hmm. I really, I really enjoy this this note. So that's that's kind of interesting. So. All right, I gotta give this one a uh, try. Cheers. Absolutely. If you like that, there's a rye. They they use cho chocolate rye malt in their rye. It's 100 rye. I think you'll really like that. Then, if you like this. Wow. Yeah. So this is a unique, di different animal for sure. All right. So John says the total wine pick was a Euro oak pick. Okay. 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 All right. So I'm not. And I'm not familiar with the Euro Oak. I don't know like what what that does or what the the difference um, that that's like imparting on this. But well, it, European Oak has got tighter spirals, so you, you're ha it has to work a little harder with that oak than with American Oak. Okay, so that's the big difference on it. And like French Oak, same thing, even is even a little bit tighter. So that's that's your big difference on the oaks. Okay, and they give it a different flavor profile. There's a pretty drastic difference between the French oak and the regular American oak and your European oak. It's all vastly different. Yeah, that's it's all really good. Yeah, I mean, I think all of that that combined for me, like, makes this very, very approachable. Like, um, I just really like the profile of this, but I like the fact that the barley part is just muted down a little bit just because there's other flavors that are there that are maybe, maybe complimenting is the right word. It's not that it's, it's taking it away. I think it's complimenting it to, to what I'm used to more with the bourbons and everything. So, right. Which, yeah, which I think is what's a little bit different about Texas single malts is that, like I said, we use new casks rather than used casks. Yeah. Now there are plenty of ones that do use used casks because like iron, they don't have a single malt. They, they're aging some currently, but they don't have it on the market yet. Okay. Um, but I've tried it. It's, it's good. Um, but they do use some used, like all of their corn whiskey is used casks. Okay. That makes is, sense. Because it's a requirement. So it's, which is great. Um, so yeah, like I said, when I, when I get all this stuff figured out and shipped out, I'm probably just sending like 20 different balconas just to. Yeah. We don't even have to, we don't even have to go through the whole other thing. We can stick with one, one company. I'd be happy yeah. with that. So no, this is. This is really, this is, that's a, it's better than I thought it was going to be. I'm, I'm very hesitant with, with barley and everything right away. Cause I've got this preconceived notion in my mind that I'm already not going to like it. Right. But I would say so far of what I've had. And again, it's very limited. That by far is probably my, my favorite single malt that I've, that I've had. I really, really enjoy the. Uh, that is exciting uh, to hear. And I'm sure Balconos will love to hear that. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's one of those, it's just a very interesting profile. Um, and, and I guess from from more of a bourbon drinker, I would say this is very approachable for somebody who is a little bit more jaded like I was going into it, where you're like just expecting to not like it. And that right there kind of changed changed my mind with um, with the single malt. Um, Oh yeah, this like, like I said, I mean the single malt alone. Like I said, I've got a French oak, a European oak, I've got crispy American oak, then I've also got a rum cast finish, tequila cast finish. My gosh! Yeah, they make all sorts of different ones, and then they make brimstone, which is made with a scrub oak and the blue corn. Like, have you ever tried brimstone? No, this, I have not. This stuff is like licking charcoal. It's delicious <laughs> for me. I, I would be interested to see what you think of that. So I'll yeah, definitely that's, uh, that's that. very interesting. Yeah, and I and I knew saying some of these things that eventually somebody was probably gonna start making fun of me a little bit. And of course Jason's like, look at Scotty, like in the single mall, which I which I probably could say I never thought would maybe come out of my mouth, but <laughs> this this one specifically I would say has changed from that standpoint. And I guess it'd be really interesting just to compare this 
to just a standard or something that you guys would recommend that I could put next to it to see the the differences that are that are there. So, but so far I would say that that right there would get an A for me. I really I really actually enjoyed that. So yeah, like I said, we'll uh we'll get a bunch of those together. We'll get some uh, some other scotches together. Yeah, and we have time. I'll put a big box together for you. Yeah, that's I mean that that's a different you know that's a whole different like journey. I mean something that I. I you know, I, I look forward. I know you and I have talked a little bit about that. It's it's something just from an evolution and trying different things. You know, we all have so many bourbons and rye and American style whiskeys that you know, just exploring something a little bit different will be um, will be kind of fun to do. So, oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, this is an incredible journey around Texas for sure. Yeah, and that's the interesting part. And that was the thing that I I started just after having some sent to me and trying things, just the the differences and in, in the flavor profiles, I was so amazed and pleasantly surprised how good some of these young whiskeys can be. I mean, we've all had young whiskey that is so green that you can't. Oh yeah, it's not good. No. no. And and this is this is just kind of changing that whole thought that you can't just default right to it being young and bad. You know? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's the thing that's nice about Texas. You can you can age it for six months and get a good whiskey out of it. Whereas you go to other states and in six months it's horrible. Like it's just that horrible green note. It's like licking a piece of plywood. Yeah. Like, no, this has got to go back in the barrel. I don't take this back. Now, now, like Robert was saying before, where they're only going in with a with a, a char number one, would you say that's that's pretty consistent there because of the heat that a lot of them are going in? at a low char but more more uh, no not really there's plenty of them that use four and five. Oh, so it just depends it's it's you know it's a distillery profile choice yeah yeah, I mean, yeah everybody uses i've heard the whole gamut in texas of people using different barrels so yeah it's totally up to the distillery what they want to do i think that more has to do with their also their army knack background as well um doing the toast on it which obviously makes beautiful whiskey but yeah, I think it just depends. Like, uh, like Lone Elm uses a three and a half, and I know some other ones have experimented with fives. So it just depends on what distillery there is. That's that's very that's very interesting. I, I was I was surprised to hear Robert say that they were only in at at a at a number one. That was surprising to me, but um, it does make sense a little bit. But anyway, oh, like Mike, like Mike Meyer. Here here we go with the funny guys now. My Scotch journey. Here we go. We can make that happen at some point. <laughs> I'm hoping the next. I'm I'm hoping the next month or less. Hopefully <laughs> less to have time to put together that package we talked about. That, that'd be that'd be fun. We probably need to do like the Scotch test dummies and just do between like you and I a twelve hours of boom and just sit here and drink. For real, it. right? <laughs> we do a yeah. marathon one. So. That would actually probably be really entertaining. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> do, do, do like they do twelve one hour things. It probably <laughs> be fun and try to get the distilleries on with you. That'd probably be a great show. <laughs> Actually, actually, you know what would be kind of fun to do is to do something like that and do like what some of the other people do and just do like a uh, like a charity thing, just raise a bunch of money for yeah. you know, some charity or whatever. But anyway, all right. So uh, now that we've um, now that I'm a uh, single malt expert, should we move <laughs> on? Uh, should we move on to the uh, the Ranger Creek, which is something sure. I was like pleasantly surprised with. So. Um, do you want to go? Do you want to do their just their regular one, or do you want to go right to the cast strength? Or what? We can do both. I've got both. All right. Um, I've got both, and I also pull out some of their other stuff just for show. Yeah, and this was, I mean, this. I don't know if you guys can see, um, but very much like the balcones that you had before. This stuff is. This is super dark, and I think this is well. So we know it's a straight bourbon. So this one's being aged at least two years. Correct. Um, and I don't have any other information. I know I did a review of it a while back, but I don't remember the, um, mash or if they even gave me that. But again, this is another, another super dark, um, uh, yeah. Cause like the original bourbon was what this is, is a, is a nine month bourbon. And it was in, they aged these in five gallon barrels okay. and it came out at 96 proof. Okay. The new ones are also not a six proof, but like you said, they're two years old. Yeah. And um, 
these also are 53 gallon barrels rather than five. Okay. So that's going to make a big difference. Yeah, that does make a, that makes a huge difference actually. But you can so. tell the difference in, you know, basically a year, the color difference is insane. And then these guys are in San Antonio. So another, I guess from Waco, that's another three hours, two and a half, three hours south of there. So oh. then you turn to another climate with significantly warmer for longer periods of time. So, you know, you get totally different changes. And then these guys, they also age some of it in a warehouse. Some of it's also aged in a box car. Really? They keep out there. And it's a giant heat box. Yeah, I can imagine. I mean, you can, you can see where, I mean, if you really want to pull some color out of a barrel, you know, you start putting it inside those those box cars like that. Holy moly, that's, that's going to be ridiculous heat. Yeah, for sure. All right, what do yeah, we have I, I'm here? Sure it would be fun to go in there in the summertime and be the guy who's got to rotate the whiskey. Yeah, yeah, I could, yeah, I couldn't even imagine. I mean, a you're going to lose considerable amount of heat, and it's going to smell really good. That's for sure. Yeah, I would think so for sure. All right, so uh, Ben Ben uh, Ben Stahl has a question for you. Um, not Texas related, but do you have a favorite Westland? Dariana, um, probably the two so far. Be my my guess. I think I like two the most. Granted, they're all delicious. Every gar I've ever had is amazing. So. I can't say enough good things about Westland in general. Have you ever had any Westland whiskeys out of Wichita, out of Washington? Um, at all? I've uh, I just the other day uh, we had a little whiskey get together and someone brought a um, brought a bottle of it over and um, it was already late in the evening by the time I had it, so I don't even really recall the recall like much of the profile of it at yeah, all. Yeah, that happens usually late in the evening. Yeah, this was this was fairly late, so. By the time I got to it, my palate was pretty fried anyway. So, yeah, you know, this is another this is another really nice nose. And again, for me, it's that that I always classify it as just that Texas funk. There's just something that's mm -hmm. sweet, char, and rye, and you know, all of that combination. Yeah, this one is a lot more um, honeys and vanillas for me. Um, I think it's just because it's further south and it's, it's you know made different. So. But it's it's tasty. They so at the Bastards Ball, mm -hmm. they brought some of their experimentals, which was uh, all three of theirs, <clears throat> which includes a rye and a, a uh, mesquite uh, single malt that was finished in a sherry cask and a cast strain, and they were fantastic. Huh. Boy, this is. I mean, it's just a great. I mean, it's just a great nose on it. You know, I mean, it's just sweet and spicy in that oak and it's i mean for it being younger it's really well balanced that's the one yeah, that I it is. And, it's, and it's a vast like the, the, here i'll pour a little bit of the original one just for comparison's sake and uh, the, one you're, the one you're pouring now that was uh, how old was that one this one i guess it's 11 months this one okay so it's this little bit but it's only a five gallon barrel too so okay yeah so you're like really concentrating it at that point Mm. Yeah, so, how silky and smooth and creamy yeah yes i mean at even the one, yeah the one you just tried um i mean i was using i was just thinking like the same thing with this with this two-year with this straight rye or with this um straight whiskey it's all that it's creamy it's got a good mouthfeel sweet spicy all of that yeah, and as far as I know, only their bourbon that I've seen comes in the big bottles so far. Everything else is still these little bottles. Okay. So, and maybe I just haven't showed up here yet. I don't know, but that's the only one that I know of. Yeah, and it's again, we're, yeah, and again, we're drinking the uh, the Ranger Creek, the thirty six um, straight bourbon whiskey, and we also have the uh, the cast strength one as well. So, and that's a that's kind of a big boy one right there. So definitely. Yeah, yeah the rye is 15 months that I've got, and then the rim fire is nine months. Okay. Boy, that's that is just really, really good. And I would say it's probably been since I've gone back to both of these, I bet close to a year. So this oh, the, wow. air, the air time is really, really um, I think helped this out too. So I can see why, and I guess you you're a good one to ask this, but do you notice that? some airtime for Texas whiskey in general does it more good. 
Absolutely. There's sometimes over some text ones. I'm like, meh. And then you go back to it like a week or two later. Holy crap. It, it comes alive. It's like, especially that Balcon is the first time I tried that pot still, the particular, that one in particular, um, same thing was like, meh. And a lot of them, yeah, you let them sit for like, or if you just let them sit for 15 minutes after you pour them, magic happens. Yeah. Um, yeah. The oxidation is very important. I find a Texas whiskey. Yeah. And I can, I can definitely see that with, with what it is they're doing and just, just it in general, where these would be one of those, those, the kind of whiskey where as soon as you get it, open the bottle and you could just let it sit for at least a week or two and just see what it does at, at that point. And then, it's probably only going to get better from there. So. Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah. So uh, if you put a um, a coin on top of it, and let it sit um, even for a couple hours. Mm -hmm. That's pretty magical too. Yeah. So it's oh, just yeah. kind of experiment with it and see what happens. Yeah, it's it's really nice. John was asking what we're drinking. We're drinking the uh, Ranger Creek, the thirty six uh, straight bourbon whiskey right now. Then we're going to move on to the cast strength one. So. But yeah, these are newer ones for sure. I guess they came out in the last year or so, I guess. Something like that, the big yeah, one. Yeah, I think I got this one from them like maybe, oh, I bet it was probably close to a year or so ago. But hmm. really, really nice. So what is it? So I guess with you, with like the uh, with the uh, Ranger Creek, with just the straight bourbon whiskey itself, what what is it that you you enjoy about it? Well, this is one of the first things, um, probably one of the first few I could get a hold of that was also at Texas, besides Balcones and Iron Root and Garrison Brothers. Um, but yeah, I like the creamy, the creaminess of this, which is like I said, it's different than the Balcones and the Iron Root. It doesn't, they taste nothing alike in reality, beyond the, the Texas fingerprint in the background. I would agree. It's... um. But it's nice and thick in coating as well. It's it's all of that. It's very oily, great mouthfeel, all of that. And it's just, it's so hard because, you know, you get so, you know, ingrained in your mind that, you know, whiskey's got to be older to be good. And it's just not true. I just, I mean, I think there's just something about, I, I mean, I guess with us drinking Texas whiskey tonight, it just goes to show that you can have some absolutely fantastic whiskey that, I, I would be very surprised if you put that in a glass. Many people would tell you that that whiskey is two years old. Oh, yeah, not a chance. It's kind of no. like, have you had any um, Indian single malts at all? You ever tried any of those? No. Like Amrood or Paul John no. or anything like that? No. Okay, so the same thing. Um, most of their whiskeys like two years. They've got older stuff, obviously, but a lot of their starter stuff is two years old as well. And it doesn't taste anywhere near like it's two years old. It tastes like it's 10 years old. Yeah. It's just the same thing, the crazy climate of India. Yeah. And I guess it's that, I mean, I guess you can really attribute it to to what that heat is that they're doing. Yeah, I mean, like, other uh, things on top of that, but that heat factor is just, it's got to be a huge, you know, factor. With oh, it. absolutely. Or Australia has the same thing happen with uh, Starward. It's another really good uh, one that they use single malts, but they finish all theirs in red wine, Australian red wine casks. Interesting. And they, and they have crazy fluctuations in their weather as well. But heck, their motto is it's four seasons in a day. So mm. it's pretty funny. But yeah, they have crazy weather in Australia. And yeah. Melbourne, apparently, particularly. Yeah, and you so, wouldn't think of it. we just think of it as hot all the time, but that's not the case. So no, yeah, because like, you know, because you can have, you know, especially like in the panhandle of Texas, it gets cold. It snows every year up there. Yeah. Now, granted, from here, that's a good seven, eight hours. Fine by me. I yeah. mean, we're actually we're expecting snow or ice here tomorrow. I'm hoping we don't get any of that crap because we can't drive on it. So it's best we don't get. <laughs> shut shut everything down. We can't drive on that stuff. Pretty much, that's exactly what happens. They close all the schools, have the businesses close up. Nothing nothing gets accomplished. Yeah. Well, today was today in our area of of Wisconsin. It was about 30 with the sun out, so we were happy. It was like a heat wave. Wow, it was 30 with the sun out. Wow, that's yeah. nice. Yeah, so it was, uh, it was nice. Now the other the other day when it was like fifty degrees, which was you know not not very common for end of January, first part of February. Um, actually, it was on it was on Sunday, and um, people were out in shorts and polo shirts, and oh my gosh, it was a, it was a heat wave around here, so it felt it felt good. But it's all 
It's all perspective, right? Well, we were in shorts and uh, and polos on Sunday, except for it was seventy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was waiting for that. So no, yeah, this is this is really this is really really good. I I'm I'm enjoying this one. And actually, with with the um, we did a bottle share the other night, and I had this out, and a couple people tried it. And their first thing was like, oh, my gosh, look how dark that is. Like, it must be old. And I said, no, here you go. This will be your your introduction to uh, to Texas whiskey and kind of what it's all about. And um, they were they were really enjoying it. So I can see why. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it, especially it's funny to blind people that are like, oh, I only like one type of whiskey. Like, whatever. Here, try this. Like, oh, it's really good. I'm like, yeah, it's Texas whiskey. Yeah. And it's, you know, and, and, and I don't know, does – does does someone saying Texas whiskey is is that offensive to you guys in Texas or is it more of a pride thing? We think it's a pride. We love it as Texas whiskey, and if you don't like it, we don't care. Screw you guys, as far as and, we're concerned. Yeah, and, and uh, I always kind of wondered that because you know we always you know people refer to you know Kentucky whiskey or Tennessee whiskey, and then I was I was just thinking about it the other day was you know is is by us or everybody else saying it's Texas whiskey is that you know, more, more offensive, or is that, you know, more of a pride thing? So we're, ex we're extremely proud of it being called Texas whiskey. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have yet to meet a Texan that's not proud of Texas whiskey. That's for sure. That, that of course enjoys it. If you don't like it, that's one thing, but anyway, yeah. that likes it. Yeah. They take it as a, as a badge of honor that yeah. Texas is creating so many unique and great flavor profiles now all over the state. Yeah. And I can, so and I can yeah, I can, I can see that. I mean, it's something I would say it is definitely something to be, to be proud about. I mean, it's, you know, that the terroir of, let's just say Texas in general, it's very unique to each, you know, area, which is, which is cool. So. Yeah. Cause I mean, cause if you go to something like the Gulf coast, totally different whiskey profile there. Cause you're on the Gulf of Mexico. Yeah. So you get a lot of, you get a lot of salt interaction there, <clears throat> which is cool. And so you get this just totally different stuff. And that part, you go out to the hill country uh, which is a little bit west of like San Antonio, get up to like Andalusia, um, stuff like that, and Garrison Brothers, totally different vocals on those as well, and also fantastic. So it's just it's very vastly different all over the state. Where supposedly there's a distillery further out west of Texas, I haven't tried. I don't think anything's in production yet. Mm -hmm. uh, but when they get stuff, I'm hoping they can send us some so we can try it out. But yeah, every region is quite different here. Yeah, I, I, I can see that. You know, I mean, it's just it's one of those extremely large states that you know north south east west you're going to get all kinds of different things so all right so what's john saying um pride honestly it's a very different region and should be recognized as such yeah so that's kind of what we were what we were talking about and it, it's exactly that you know like matt was saying that you get to these different areas um you know within the the entire state of texas and you've got different different you know condition weather conditions so that's that's one of the the cool things. There's not many, probably not many other states. I would say that that can even you know, not really think at that. I mean, that's that's ridiculous. So yeah, it's just so big and so vastly different. The climate changes yeah. throughout the state when you go from certain different places in it. Yeah, I mean maybe like because you got like Southwest whiskeys, which are totally which is funny, which are totally different. Like stuff out of New Mexico and Arizona. Which also both makes really good whiskeys, but totally different than what we get here. Yeah. All right, so I've got the uh, the range of Kentucky's fast strength now. So on my bottle, this is saying that this was aged, and this is batch one. So I don't know what you've got. Batch one. Okay, and I've got bottle number eight twenty eight. Okay, mine is four thirty five, and mine is one hundred and twenty seven point two proof. Yep, that's what I got. Okay, all right, and it's yours is aged. Two years, three months. Yep, that's exactly what I got. Yeah, this this I remember when I first tried it. How just incredibly different. I was like really taken back by the overall complexity of it. Just yeah, it's one of those ones. I was like, really, is it going to be better? Is it really not going to be better? And I'm yeah. shocked how good this is. Yeah, I was. I was really, really. It's it's for me. It reminds me of. Um, and this is going to be a little bit of a stretch, but when you smell like an E.H. Taylor barrel proof where it's very rich in like the dark fruits and the, the vanillas, things along those lines, it's something very similar to that. So, Yeah, because you got a lot of um, 
like plums. Yeah. And dates. Some yeah. Raisins. A, lot those, a lot of those dark, heavy, rich, like kind of sweet fruits, almost like when they start to, um, you know, like, I don't want to say like rot, but they start to like ferment almost. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that overly ripe about to go bad. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. The sugary sweet at the same time. It, exactly. And it is, it's very, yeah. Like plums and dates and all that. Oh, that is it's really nice. Mm. All right. What else do we have in the chat here? Anything else? Well, I guess John's asking, or John Kranz is asking about the uh, Yellow Rose Outlaw. That's actually is Texas made because a lot of te Yellow Rose is not Texas made. That one is, and that one's actually really good. And that's a good one for an intro to Texas. The Outlaw is an excellent uh, Yellow Rose. I would definitely pick that up if that's close and it's a reasonable price. And should be, I think, about $45, 50 is what the Yellow Rose costs for the Outlaw, and it's quite good. I really enjoy that one. Okay. But it'll give you the act because you bet the other ones are all sourced, but that one is actually made here. And where are they out of? They're in Houston. Okay. So that's a coastal, um, but that has a really nice, dusty Texas character to it. And you can tell that it's different than the other ones that they're sourced because, like, it tastes like a Texas whiskey. The other ones don't. Huh. So it's, it's vastly different. It's interesting to see ones that are sourced and then in house uh, now to see the difference that is happening. And with some of the one with some of the companies that are close to like the coast, and you were mentioning some of the with the salt water and everything, do you get do you get that sometimes in their in their whiskeys? Yep, you sure do. Okay. So, so one of the biggest ones down there um, is Giant, which is a gigantic contractor. So they have their own stuff, kind of like MGP does, but it will be it's a giant contract distillery now. Um, I forget the ridiculous size of that place, but. Um, yeah, they, they have just really more salinity stuff. I wish they put a little more higher proof. Like, they've got a 95 proof. That's the highest I've had from them. Everything else is 80, which is fine. Um, but it's it's good. I like it. It's a little more light than the other Texas whiskeys. It's not as um, – they water it down some. It's not as heavy. on the, But, you know, that's good because it's something different, though. And I think it's because it's by the ocean. You don't you get the heat, but you also get the massive humidity. You get being on the coast – so you get a different uh, mouthfeel with the stuff from Giant than you do with stuff that's even a little further north, like uh, Outlaw, which is a little bit further north than Houston. Okay. It's, just, it's really interesting to see even that difference, and they're not that far apart. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, that's the that's just even in, just in in all of this talk, mm. it's just very interesting how different of profiles all of these different regions you know will will have. Very similar to I suppose if you're uh, discussing what what things are like in scotland i i suppose oh yeah i mean same thing with scotland you have vast differences in your regions there too it's just that you know texas is i guess two three times the size of scotland so yeah yeah which makes sense why you get such different regions yeah why this is this is just very i mean it's again at 127.2 proof Smooth. that's that's the one thing i've noticed is that they just don't drink that hot nope you know, it, it's, it's, I mean, it definitely lets you know there's some proof, but anybody who's, you know, anybody who's got some experience or I mean, no, no rookie is probably going to attack 127.2 proof. I mean, this, no, it'll probably choke them out. Yeah. You know, but for, for any of us who are used to drinking, you know, high proof whiskey. Yeah. It, it doesn't it's, taste hot at all. No, it, it does not. It's super oily like, and mouth coating. It's just yeah. it's really a beautiful whiskey. It really, it really is. So, I mean, they they've done a they've done a really really nice job with it too. And I know there's a million other ones we can we can explore, and it'd probably be a good for uh, another live stream or something too. So, oh yeah, I'll get you. Like I said, hopefully in the next few weeks I'll get you out a tremendous amount of Texas whiskey, and mm -hmm. then we can go through some serious stuff. Yeah, yeah, we can do pretty much the entire Texas whiskey trail except for one distillery that I need them to send me a sample because they don't have anything on the shelf yet. Oh. Um, let's see. Like so, so talking like dusty character, like Alan, the whiskey friend's talking about, is the Garrison Brothers Balarama. That thing is super dusty, but it's really good. So they actually double barrel them. So they put it in for two years, then put it in another new charred barrel or another oh. two years. Okay, it's freaking phenomenal. Let me so grab it. Very, very similar sure. to like what um, um, Woodford does with their double double oak. Exactly. Let me grab the bottle because it's. I'll show you the color on this thing. Okay. Yeah, it's very, I mean, as you guys can see, I mean, these, 
these Texas whiskeys and and John and everybody. And I don't know if there's anybody else in here, Matt. Do you know? I know John's from Texas. Is there anybody else yeah, in Texas here? Lives about thirty minutes from me. Okay. But yeah, so this is the free, yeah. this is Garrison Brothers, and this is their very special release. Besides the cowboy, yeah. But yeah, this is it, and this is great stuff. They are really white corn rather than um, yellow or purple or blue. And that's the other thing in Texas, you know, is, is the varietals of corn are so vastly different here too. Yeah, which yeah. is interesting to see. So it's it's just which is cool. Is the uh, white corn, does that kind of um, impart a little more, like, some extra sweetness and stuff on it, too, then? Um, I'd say it actually gets uh, a little bit drier. Really? Okay. Interesting. And I, that may have to do more with the, the heat, but it, to every, all the places I've tried white corn from seems to be a little bit drier and a little bit thicker, is what I've noticed as far as when you use a white corn. Because I know, like, them, still Austin, Acre, all use a white corn mash bill. Which is interesting stuff, but yeah, it's all of it's good though. I like all of it. There's not a bad one I've had yet. All right, so Donald Rance asks, uh, "How does the Andalusia Triple Distilled compare with the Bushmills Single Malt?" Um, I'd have to compare them. Oh, <laughs> they're both good. Um, I haven't. Is he talking about the like the ten year Single Malt, Donald? I guess that's the question. If that's the one, I assume you're asking about because I can't imagine because the I can I can compare them at some point in time and start and let them know. I've never done a side by side. I would say it's probably similar, just from memory. It probably is fairly close, um, but I've never actually done them side by side. But we could certainly do that, and make that happen at some point. Yeah, I know you've got enough stuff that you can do a comparison with pretty much anything. We try. It, it's yeah. really a good time. Uh, fantastic, fantastic whiskey. I just I love the profile of it, and they're very. You know, I would say going back between the Iron Root and the Ranger Creek, they're they're similar in terms of the 115 and the 127. Mm -hmm. They're they're similar in profile, I would say. A um, couple of slight differences, but um, but both very very good. And I would say, just kind of like creeping up, um, you know, in, in those kind of proofs, I'm starting to realize like how much more like kind of a concentrate the high proof texas whiskey becomes it's very you know like we were talking about those fruits that are just about ready to turn and there's that sweetness there's just this refinement to it yes yeah, so i'm gonna pull out this iron root icor and see because this one comes in 123 just to compare it to this one okay this one is um also four years old though is that a, a special release, like a distillery? the five-year anniversary release that was available only at the distillery and sold out in two hours? Oh boy, okay. But is I can send you a sample of it. It's freaking awesome. Is that the one they did the big, um, the big like kind of event and everything for? I know there were a lot of people down there. Correct. That okay. was that. Was that okay? <laughs> Eric, of course, comes in with his uh, typical yeah, he smart them with all yeah. the Texas whiskey month or months at this point yeah he's been he's been hammering away i figured he'd appreciate this so yeah of course texas whiskey sucks no wait i suck just texas whiskey yeah that's probably more more true than more yeah that's good no hmm. that's, uh, that's really good well i look forward to uh to trying some of those things i know you can uh i know you'll be able to really shock the old palate and, and test it out so i look forward to that at some point but Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it's gonna be a large box. <laughs> <laughs> large box. No, yeah. well, this this was a uh, this was a lot of this was a lot of fun. So Absolutely. I wish we would have, I wish we wouldn't have had the uh, twenty minutes of technical difficulties. Yeah. But they We've all had it happen. It's just part of the deal. Yeah, it is part of the deal. But all right, well, I guess uh, I know the uh, bourbon junkies are going strong yeah. over there now. So um, you guys can hop over their channel. They're doing some good things. I know they just passed like 5,000 subs. And they're, they, had, they may be at 6,000 by now, though. They're just exploding. So good good for them. Yeah. But, uh, well, Matt, thanks for hopping on tonight. I appreciate it. Um, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Look forward to what we, uh, you know, doing some other stuff in the, uh, in the future. So, yeah. So everybody else, uh, Thanks for uh, joining tonight, and um, hopefully we'll uh, we'll see you again uh, next time. Cheers. Cheers.